What's going on guys? Welcome back to another MD Fish Tanks build video. So it's been a while since I did something on the like small scale. So that's what I'm going to do today. I've got a ton of tanks that I'm not really using for anything in, in particular at the moment. And I want to put them to good use. I also want something else on my desk that I think will look really good. And you know, you can have it as a tabletop aquarium or anything like that if you wanted. Wherever really, on a bookshelf or side table, it could work anywhere. And these are the tanks that I'm talking about guys. So you can see there, sense of scale, look, there's my hand. It's just being used as plant storage. Bit of a waste in my opinion, I could do something else with them. This one's a little bit too large for what I'm going for, but this one I think could be perfect. I'll put the dimensions and that up shortly. But what I want to do is put it on my desk. So this is the tank in the middle of the studio. Studio, and this side look is my desk now this is obviously where I do all my editing and very recently I put this little lamp here it's like an Ikea cheap little lamp LED thing and I don't know why I put it there because I didn't need a tank on the on this desk but then I thought well there's a space there so I might as well put one in so that's where I want to put it just let me get that tank cleaned out and we can make a start We're all clean, but it does need a nice black background just to separate it from everything else that's going on around it. Click subscribe. Right, there we go, nice and tidy. Make sure you wipe off any soap residue. You don't want any of that getting in the tank at all. Could be harmful to the fish. Use paper towel and water and just clean it all right down. So we've got a tank, we've got a light. We need a little substrate system on this one. I don't want to pack it for the plants, but you know, I want to have some nutrients underneath the sand that I'm going to be placing in. And to do that, I'm going to use some soil from an area of land behind my garden. So we're back at the studio, I've got the soil here, now it's all dried and crushed up, I just bashed it up, I didn't need to show you that, it's bashing up soil. Um, I've removed most of the sort of twigs and stuff, and now we've just got some nice dry soil to be able to put in. Now this stuff is full of nutrients, we don't really want a lot of it, I mean even that is probably too much, so I'm just going to do a light dusting on the bottom of the sand, and then we can cover it over with sand and gravel to lock it in place, because we don't want it getting in the water column. Honestly guys, I know that doesn't look like a lot, but you don't need more than that. Trust me, it's just a little bit of nutrients that are going to be locked down for the roots to get into.
So you can see there guys, we've used the usual trick of banking the whole substrate up to the back gives it a better angle and that angle makes it look deeper than it actually is because if I was down here now and it was flat then the sh it would look like it would end there you know so it'd be really shallow so we get in that whole extra inch of section I don't know <laughs> but anyway it just looks deeper all right like this you can see the angle there from the side and that's going to help with the depth so next up we need to put in our hardscape and for that I'm just going to go for a few little cool pebbles I've got this tank's going to be more about the emergent plants and the fish swimming around in it so I'm going to keep it nice and simple with just a few crips and a few pebbles Actually, one thing I want to do first is just add a little bit more of a white sand to it just to, to lighten that color a bit because it's quite yellow because obviously this is like a 3000 Kelvin lamp. It's not like usual sort of color rendition that you'd use for your planted tank, but it will work really well. We just need to lighten it using some white substrate. Okay, there we go, that looks cool. So you can see I took out that little one behind it, just wasn't, it was too flat. And all of a sudden you just stick one that sticks out from the rest. And to me, that sort of makes it work. Again, there's not a lot going on at this top area because obviously that's where the plants are gonna be coming in. So we wanna just leave space for that. But you can see from the top view, look, I've left gaps between each rock to be able to put some plants into as well. But we don't want too many, remember. We've got some really nice plants there. This Blixer Japonica that we've got actually came out of Mike's tank over here. So this is my better fish, Mike. <laughs> he thinks I'm gonna feed him now, but yeah. Put my hands in, see there's getting quite a lot there growing. So I just plucked a couple of bits off. The stuff spread so fast. It was only two tiny sprigs when I first actually planted that in there. So yeah, I took some from there, which is always good to be able to do. And these other three plants are from my plant storage area. Let me show you. So this is studio number two for many of you that probably won't know. Racking system there full of loads of shrimp. This side is just some sort of quarantine or fish that I haven't you know, built a permanent home for yet, but they're all, they're all okay. Down here, we've got some honey grammies that are gonna be going in one of my tanks soon. Um, this one's got some lampies, lampi killifish, really cool. But this tends to be the place where I put like, you know, just pots of different plants I buy when I see out in the shops or whatever. Just stick them in here because I don't know what I want to do with them. So those crypts were in this one and they actually started growing into the substrate as well, the aqua soil. So they're doing really well and they're going to transfer over to the other tank really nicely. I'm also thinking about this stuff at the back here as well, possibly. See how it goes. That is called Junkus Repens, which I've never heard of before in my life. But that's what I like, what I like to do. If I'm out and about in the shops and I see a plant that I don't know or I've never seen before, I just buy it, bring it back here and just stick it down into one of these tanks and we can use it at a later date then. Oh yeah, an exclusive. This is currently an experiment. I'm trying to see if this changes the parameters of the waters, but it's something cool coming up soon. Uh, it's also a sort of grow out tank for plants as you can see. So yeah, coming soon.
that's it crazy simple not a huge amount going on but that's what i want it's going to grow nice and slowly look really nice as well the background plants will lift up a little more than that and the blixer japonica will sort of spread out as well i mean i don't want to be doing tons of maintenance with this tank so those plants are going to allow that i suppose i might as well just put some water in it now remember when putting water in take it slow we don't want to stir all that up especially since we've got that soil underneath we definitely don't want that in the water column so just put some paper towel down fill it up nice and slowly with a jug in your hand oh yeah i think that looks like awesome it looks surprisingly detailed considering the fact that there aren't really many components to it at all just a little different textures that really actually add to it it's probably a good time now that we've got the water in just to add in our little filter as well There we go, just a tiny little nano filter. Now I know loads you're gonna be asking where I got this from, so I'll leave a link in the description for you. Go check it out if you wanna get one. It might not be the exact same one, but I'll try and find as close to it as I can. They're great little filters. I mean, they're so easy just to pop out, clean out the little bit of media in there and put back in again. They really do work a treat as well. I mean, don't expect them to work on bigger tanks because they just push a little bit of water around. They're not really offering any huge amount of biological filtration, but they are adding a little bit of mechanical filtration, just polishing that water a little bit for you and just keeping that flow moving around the tank. Stops waste collecting, that sort of thing. And you know, maybe you just wanted a nice little fish tank and if you did, you can stop right there, stick some floating plants in it, couple of little fish, awesome. But I wanna go one step further this one and have all those plants sort of coming out the top as well. And to do that, I need to do something that I've done recently in one of my bigger tanks on a smaller scale. So this is the tank I'm talking about. This is my brand new amp, well not brand new, it's a couple of weeks old now, maybe three weeks actually. So the idea being is gonna be loads of tetras, plecos, that kind of thing, loads of really cool fish, quarries, all of that. So I was going for like a nice river system or river theme. So we've got a power head blowing loads of water nice and quickly. But what I'm talking about for the riparium is these plants we've got at the top here. So this is peace lily. And what I've basically done, it's gonna be really hard to see, but if you look right there, you can see that there's some wire wrapped around and the roots are going into the water. You can probably see it around here from the Monstera plant. There we go, so it's just in the water, just the roots and a little bit of the plant. It's actually all right to have a little bit in the, in the water as well. And they're just growing really, really well. Not only do they look cool, they're also pulling nitrates out of the water because they're using it as food to grow. So it's a win-win really. And that's what I want to do in the riparian, but not with these plants. I want to try some smaller plants. And these are the plants that I want to use. Well, not that one. <laughs> that one's just staying put, but I've got a smaller version of the palms there, look, see? And I also saw this really nice fern. Basically, I want to try these out in that tiny little aquarium that we've got there and if it works i can do it on a bigger scale with bigger plants i mean maybe that one will work i don't even know yet so it's just a bit of experimenting seeing what plants do work with this new method and what don't i just think it's a really cool way of being able to bring sort of a, a huge extra dynamic to your whole tank without having to sort of put a ton of effort in if you like because it's just hanging on the side but as i did before the first thing i'm going to need to do is take them out of the pots and wash all the soil off both of them and then that way we've just got the roots left and that's what can go in the water again we don't want organic matter floating around the water column it will just cause algae So there we go, there is actually a lot of plants there, way too many plants for that small little tank we've got. So I'm gonna take like, you know, a few sprouts. What what are these? <laughs> a few nuggets, I, I don't know. Just take a few of each one and uh, I'm, I'll probably split this fern as well because look, that's pretty darn big, isn't it? Like the tank's not too dissimilar to that one there and it's gonna take over. So I'll probably split that one in half, a few nuggets, but you're probably thinking, how are we gonna suspend them in the water without them just falling in? Well, that is where this comes in so this is some wire that i bought let me get it out of this pack i should have done this beforehand shouldn't i one-handed is quite hard there you go look so you can see it's just like a wire that's bendable so we can bend it into like a hook that goes over the aquarium and just makes like a ice cream cone for it to sit in if you like <laughs> Thank you. 
Oh yeah, there we go. That worked a treat. It's kind of hard to see because of all the greenery behind it. Hang on, let me put a white background on it. I can use the front of this. This is a homemade aquarium by the, well, the stand is. Look, if I open it up, there we go. Built it myself, a couple of magnets at the top holds it all in place and just a generic Opti white tank. So I can use that to put behind it just to highlight at the moment, you know, the difference between the two. I think that'd be a good way of sort of setting it all out and showing it as well. Ah, oh, there we go. Yeah, that's much better. Let's frame in it nicely. And that'll look great for the thumbnail as well, to be fair, won't it? So yeah, we'll carry on now and I'll put the palms in. I think they're called palms. I'll find out for sure. That's obviously a fern. Again, I don't know what fern. It just says assorted ferns and assorted palm on the <laughs> on the labels. Great help. Yeah, there we go. So right, that might be too many, but you know, I started, so I might as well finish. It can be a little bit fiddly making these little hooks to start with, but you know, you get used to it quite quickly. And these are a much better job than the first ones that I did. So yeah, looking good. Let's just put them all in. Okay, I like that, but I think it's one palm too much. I wanna do, I think I'm gonna do palm in the middle and then two ferns either side. Oh yes, I think we nailed it. I really like it. It's so cute, so simple, and it's, it's, it's done exactly what I wanted it to do. Now, one thing I've noticed already is that there's loads of particles of soil and stuff that was on the roots floating around the water. So let's just do a quick 100% water change right now with dechlorinated tap water. <laughs> so yeah, that's looking great. I think it's now time to put our fish in and for that I need to take you to the other side and this one here this tank is my sort of Shallow pond if you like, but basically I've been using it for growing guppies now There's quite a few adults in there now real nice male endler guppies um, We've got different varieties. Where's my favorite one? There's my favorite one. Look at that beauty. I love that I think it's called a snake skin or something like that Anyway, I want to try and get more of him, hopefully anyway. But there's quite a few babies in here, but the survival rate of the babies isn't as high as I want it to be. So I'm going to use that new tank to put all the babies in. So for instance, there's one down there. Hopefully you're not getting just reflections, but yeah, see, there's a couple of them, a couple of babies right there. Let's move them across, ensure their survival because, you know, the males will pick off the, well, I suppose the females as well. The, the adults will pick off the babies and, uh, there's a lot of cover in here, but I'm noticing that some, some of them are getting eaten. So let's try and give them the best chance of success. I think at some point I want to put a lot of them into this aquarium here. This is my Asian fish aquarium. Guppies are Asian. Um, I think it'd just be really cool to have a huge load of endler guppies just, just swimming around. I think that look great. Right, so we got our endler babies. Now, not like newborn babies. I think they're a few weeks old. Uh, let's put them into the new tank. The new tank's the same temperature, by the way. I've checked that. I don't need a heater for most of my setup, guys, because remember, the, the room is heated to like 22 degrees, uh, apart from for the discus aquarium here, which is actually set to 28 degrees C. So that needs a heater, obviously. There's two heaters built, built into the filters. A bit like this one here as well, actually. I made this one 25 degrees for the, uh, for the neon tetras, and I've got a built-in in line sort of heat up thing so it's currently saying 22 because i've just done a water change on it but that'll warm up shortly but anyway let's get our babies into their new setup haha <laughs> yeah straight away they seem pretty happy that's cool but we also need snails snails are important
So even though I put some sponge in that filter from another setup, technically seeding it, it's not very much at all. So I'm going to be adding some beneficial bacteria straight away. And tomorrow I'll probably do a 50% water change, more, more beneficial bacteria going back in and just keep doing that for a full week. That's the way you can do a instantly cycled, if you like, tank and be able to put fish in straight away. You can't just put water in and fish in from a new setup straight away and expect it to work. You need to get some of the beneficial bacteria. You can get them from a local pet suppliers or even online or anywhere really.